In our women's health slot with Dr. Mark, we're talking hormones. And in the last episode, we spoke about hormonal treatments, if they're safe and what treatments are available. Now in studio, I have once again, Dr. Mark and Sister Elise to talk further on this topic. So now we've established the different kinds of treatments that are out there and, and the safety and the efficacy of various treatments. But now if I'm a patient who is in need of hormonal therapy of some kind, can I ask what's best for me or, or what should I be looking for as a patient? Michael, I think the first thing that we need to start at is this is a very difficult um, discussion to have. Not a difficult, but it needs to be a detailed discussion. We need to understand that there's so many different conditions and factors that play a role. One, physical condition. Do I have a uterus? If we focus on uh, menopausal hormone therapy, do I still have a uterus? Um, that will determine whether you are going to get a combination treatment, um, progesterone estrogen, or whether you're going to get estrogen only. Conditions, comorbidities, for instance. Can I do just interject there? With um, th that being said, uterus or not, that also tells us, she, the woman will tell us do she has a menstrual cycle or not. Okay. And is it regular or irregular? Right. Just right. wanted to say that. When Elise, actually that's great because we now we also need to consider age. Mm -hmm. Is she still... Um, in her menstrual cycle or is she postmenopausal, menopausal? So there's, there's a lot of factors there. When we look at comorbidities, did this patient have a DVT? Does she have um, a cardiovascular condition? Um, are there other hormone uh, issues? For instance, thyroid, is this patient diabetic? Mm. Um, we need to look at conditions like depression, anxiety, um, health um, of the gut, weight issues with these patients. Mm -hmm. Now we need to take into consideration certain medications that the patient are taking. Medications have a nasty habit of interacting with one another. Yes. Yeah. And giving one medication for a specific condition can interact with something else, leading to not only side effects, but adverse events. We need to look at what supplementation the patient is taking. We need to look at lifestyle factors. Is this patient um, using um, m other medications, alcohol, uh, is she a smoker? Um, are they physically active? Do they have disabilities, et cetera, et cetera? So this is, this is where you start. Um, you sit down with your practitioner, we spoke about this before, and you become involved mm -hmm. in the decision-making process. Um, you need to, one, understand the condition. What is it that you have? Mm. Then you need to understand the risk and benefit of treatment. If I don't treat, what is, what is going to be the, the end result not treating this condition? What are the risks associated with this? Yeah. Um, how is this going to impact on my lifestyle? Do I need to make lifestyle changes? Mm -hmm. For instance, stopping alcohol or um, stopping exercise, whatever. Um, so what is right for you is not right for your sister or for your mother, mm. yes. your daughter. It's individualized. And this is where understanding and being involved is so incredibly important. So I think that is, it's, so, it's, it's a lovely way to just reinforce the fact that this is a holistic approach. So Elise, I want to ask you from, from the perspective of being a woman who has had to deal with some of these things in, in your life, I'm sure, um, how, do you, how would you encourage people to get involved, as Mark says, in the process and really embrace it? I think by the time a woman is at that stage where she really comes to our clinic specifically, is that she's been everywhere. Um, she's tried every single specialist, et cetera, et cetera. Not all of them, but most of them. And um, Google is fantastic for these type of, of um, information um, sharing, et cetera. Um, as a woman, we don't realize actually what is wrong with us. Mm -hmm. The information is not out there. Uh, we had the discussion yesterday where I said to Mark that, you know, sexual dysfunction, let me touch on that. Sexual dysfunction happens 
for me, it happened first in my head. Mm, mm. So to be cognizant of certain symptoms of who you not who you aren't or actions that you not usually do. Right, right. Is that's where it starts. Is okay. that um, point where you need to realize, okay, but my husband is avoiding me. Maybe I'm a bit snappy. Mm. I need to go and look what's going on with myself. You know, it's a self-awareness. Well, one of the things that I think very few of us realize uh, is that there's a continuum of yes. health. The continuum of health have two extremes. Mm. The worst outcome, death, and the best outcome, optimal health. Now, in between, we go from death, it becomes a little bit better, we're sick, um, we're ill, we have symptoms, and then we become asymptomatic. We go to our doctors to treat us between asymptomatic ah, and dead. Right. We specialize on the full spectrum, from asymptomatic to I am in good health, I'm in great health, I'm in optimal health. Mm. And we tend to forget that. For us at the T Clinic, I think our aim is not only providing optimal health, treating our patients, we live longer whether we want to or not nowadays. Yeah. Through the advances in medicine, it will keep you alive, but not necessarily give you a great quality of life. Mm -hmm. And I, I often have my patients come in, and the last question I ask them in my consultations are, score your quality of life out of 10. And we've spoken about this in previous episodes. And when they have a suboptimal quality of life, anything below a six, I actually want to say below a seven, why do you want to be alive? Mm. It's about creating balance in these systems to give you optimal health, which, which leads to a great quality of life. Absolutely. And I think there's only so much you can do. Uh, I, I mean, for, for the most part, there are lots of lifestyle changes you can make, and they'll keep you in that that okay space, but but if you want to go further, you've got to make some drastic changes or get a little bit of help sometimes as well. It's very interesting when you say that a lot of people uh, want to go the natural route or the um, I'm going to run myself healthy or exercise myself healthy. As we grow older, the natural progression is that systems are going to go out of balance. Mm -hmm. They're going to start shutting down because we are living longer than we are evolutionary uh, supposed to. Yes. The systems haven't evolved to carry us through, and they naturally shut down, but through medicine, we keep going. Mm. Changing that, optimizing that, and there's um, such great things that are in the pipeline. I, I shared with Elise this morning stem cell therapies that are aimed at re replenishing um, organs like your ovaries and testicles that will throughout your lifespan keep them within physiologically good range. Yeah. Yes, they st they're thinking of starting this in animals. So we're far away from that yet, but everything is moving towards keeping us not only v healthy, but active and viable, mm. contributing members to society. And I think the majority of our patients are starting to feel a decline in the usefulness as humans. Yeah, and I think that it is a scary thing. So let's come back to the, the um, sort of the female menopausal health, if I can call it that, and the impact of, of hormonal treatment there. How would you, how differently would you treat somebody, say, in their 40s versus somebody, uh, say someone in their 40s with a, a low libido as a, as a strong symptom, and then versus somebody in their 60s who is further along the journey uh, um, in life? I would, we would start looking at the different factors. Age, number one. Um, is this patient still uh, menstruating? Mm. If you're in your early 40s, what we, what we are looking at is those perimenopausal er, uh, area that's nondescript. 
Here we can look at optimizing uh, hormone levels through bespoke supplementation, for instance, not necessarily hormone replacement therapy uh, right. or hormone optimization therapy. As we move along into the menopause, where we start having the symptoms of heart flushes, uh, memory loss, there you can start with hormone optimization and eventually hormone optimization would progress to our late 50s early 60s to hormone replacement therapy okay so it really depends again on in which stage of menopause um, a woman is what we tend to forget is it's not only about menopause um, other conditions that are related to other hormone systems has an effect on menopausal symptoms themselves. Mm. Yeah, and I want to add burnout, for instance, yes, as well. Absolutely. Women of the age of 40 reaches the peak of their careers. And, you know, burnout is, is rife underneath those women uh, mm. within this w that age group. So that's also what we are looking for. And we do ask the right questions, but we have to confirm it as well with the blood tests. Mm. It's not something that we can say, okay, you definitely have burnout. Yes, yeah. But do definitely the questions that we ask and how we get to that diagnosis is a combination of. So on that note, I mean, you talk about 40s, the peak of career, burnout is a common thing, but when should some sort of treatment be initiated? Is it when that happens or is it before that happens? Uh, and when I talk about treatment again, I'm talking about whether it's supplementation, a cocktail of supplements that are gonna just give you that optimum level of health. Um, is it, are you sort of behind the game when you're already seeing the symptoms or should people start to be looking at how can they optimize from earlier on so that by the time they hit that stage where they could develop these kind of symptoms or, or conditions, they've either offset it or delayed it or sort of diminished it to some degree. That's the ideal, I think, to start early as, as early as possible. But when you are in that moment, you don't realize what's happening with you. Yeah, yeah. And when it's sort of advanced, then only then you're starting to look for help. Michael, I think one of the things that we need to realize is that um, the advances in research regarding the role that hormones play in health um, is, is growing so fast. The number of people that are doing research on this is growing exponentially. Our understanding about the safety and efficacy of this is growing. Um, what we need to aim for is education. Yeah. Um, if we can just inform people that this is, this is something that's going to happen, be aware of it, look out for it, mm. and start acting on it. The moment that you start noticing something is changing, we've run through those big symptoms yes. um, in previous episodes, and we'll run through them again throughout the series. But the big things are if there's changes in behavior, cognitive function, energy levels, uh, body composition, mm. go and speak to your practitioner. Take time, find out because these are signs and symptoms of something underlying. Absolutely. And I think to answer your, f your question further is, um, we said that we would like to start earlier with supplementation, optimization, and then we reach the age of menopause, which mm. is usually around 55 to 60. And then there we start with hormone replacement therapy. Um, also, confirmed with blood tests. Yes, yeah. Um, it's not something that we decide on our own. Okay, this the is time what's has wrong. Come, this is what we've got to yeah. do. Yeah. Um, it, there is consensus that uh, certain stages of menopause, like we discussed previously, happens at certain a mm. ages. But yes, your question was precisely about six, age 60. It's not too late to start optimizing okay, okay. and feeling better. Yeah. Right. Mark, just remind us one more time if people want to find out more in terms of getting educated, but also if they want to um, maybe initiate a, a conversation with you, where can they get hold of you? I think the best way for someone to start is maybe to look at the website, www.theclinic.com and call us. You know what, we in Joburg and in Umschlange, the number is 010-824-1393. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much. A wonderful Thank discussion you. as always. Thanks.